How are you? I'm glad you're here. I've just finished an enormous pile of bread for you. I have a new French bread recipe for you, and I can't wait to share it with you. If you've seen me do French bread before, disregard the previous recipe, please. This is so much better, and it is so easy. It's just incredible. But first of all, today's lesson on history. Who invented bread? You thought I was going to say the Chinese, didn't you? Because I always say the Chinese. But actually, they, they didn't. The Chinese have really um, always had a little flat pancake. And that goes back to very ancient times. And we found that little flat pancake, unleavened, you see, in China. And we also found it in Egypt. Uh, and we found it among the Jews, the people of Israel. Now, when the Jews went into Egypt to find more grain, do you remember the story of Joseph and the whole works? You see? They brought with them a sourdough a rising agent. And they were the first ones to ever use yeast. After they fled Egypt, the Egyptians succeeded in uh, isolating that yeast and pretty soon they wound up with what they called the raised barley cake. And they've been given credit for making raised bread, and they really shouldn't have been. The Jews did it first. The Jews did it first. Bread was so very common in the ancient world, but it was very tough. The Egyptians used to bake bread that was almost like a, almost like a porridge. It was just hard as a rock. And in order to eat the stuff, you had to soak it in water first. And then it would begin to collapse, and then you could eat it like a gruel. And the water that would drain off of the bread would ferment. And from that, we invented beer. So bread and beer go hand in hand. And in the old days in Egypt, the housewives would go from door to door selling the beer that they made from bread. That's the oldest occupation. <laughs> you thought it was something else. All right, on to bread. This morning, I want to prepare a batch of, of uh, French bread for you uh, without any difficulty at all. The first thing you do is to measure out. Oh, please remember that you have to have a scale. When you bake bread, you must have a scale. You can't use a, a measuring cup because flour changes its volume all of the time, depending on the weather, humidity, uh, whether or not the stuff's been packed down, whether or not it's been sifted. Nobody wants to stand around and sift flour anymore. You don't do that. So get a good scale. I have a little Swiss scale here. Uh, Swiss, it's Swedish. Why am I in trouble? And uh, I have it set for two pounds, three ounces. And I've measured out my flour here. Let me see if that's... See, I just use an old lunch sack. There we go. It's exactly two pounds... There it is. It's exactly two pounds, three ounces of flour. That's what I want you to use, all right? So first of all, we'll put in our mixing bowl. And if you don't have a fancy KitchenAid like I have, then you can use a regular mix master to at least get it started. So we have two and one half cups, got that, of tepid water. What does tepid mean? Tepid means when you put your finger in it, you go, ah. It isn't warm. It isn't cold. It's just, ah. Got it? To that, then, two and a half cups of water, we're going to add two packages of dry yeast. That's about two teaspoons if you're using it from the jar. I find it a little bit cheaper this way to buy it in a jar. There we go. Otherwise, use two packages. Got it? Nothing to it. And we'll begin to make a sponge. Now, the total amount of flour that you're going to use is two pounds, three ounces. Don't change that. Don't become confused now by the fact I tell you to use four cups and so forth. All of the flour that I use is going to come out of this sack. I've already measured it. By the way, if you want to buy good bread flour, try and find a brand that has, uh, that's heavy in hard wheat. In the West Coast, in my uh, area in Seattle, I have a marvelous hard wheat flour from Fisher's Flouring Mill, but I can't find it out here. So look around for a hard bread flour, and that'll give you a very lovely crust. That's what we want. So to our, to our um, water and yeast now, we're going to add four cups of the total amount of flour. Got that? Don't get confused. So here we go. And we're going to begin with a classic French dough. It's just so easy to make and it's terrific. Just measure that out loosely here. Because what we want to do is to allow the, the flour and the, the uh, water to blend for a while. And we want to allow the flour to turn to gluten. There's a substance in flour called gluten uh, that is really uh, tantamount to goo. And we want it to really goo up here so that we get a nice crust. If you make bread in too much of a hurry, you see, you'll get that nice, soggy, white, lovely, painless, uh, tasteless stuff that you and I uh, call white bread. I can't stand it. 
I don't eat it. Neither will my sons. There, we have four, four cups of the total amount of flour. Look at that. Look inside the bowl and you'll understand what I'm talking about. You see, see how gooey that is? Now, if you wait long enough, this will pull away from the side of the bowl. And I know you doubt me, so I'm going to show you what happens. I'm going to get another bowl. I've already done this batch. You want to mix this in your mix master for 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, it will turn to gluten. It'll be absolutely gooey, gooey, gooey. I don't mean just a sticky mess like this. You'll see the difference. And then it will, uh, it'll be ready to absorb the rest of the flour. Gluten is what we want. And it's very, very important to good bread baking. That's the secret. Let me show you the difference. I've already kneaded this one for 10 minutes. Now you watch. You see how, you see how sticky, whoops, it's climbing right up the paddle. You see, it comes right up the paddle. See how sticky that is and how stringy, how it, how it, how it, uh, how it pulls out, you know, boop. You see how it pulls away from the bowl? Gorgeous stuff. All right, we're ready now to add the rest of the flour. And we simply pour that in. <coughs> And uh, we need to add some salt, too. Let's do the salt first. You want one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of water. And there's a teaspoon of water and one teaspoon of salt. All right, blend that. We're just trying to make a heavy, very, very heavy saline solution, you see, so it'll mix into the bread properly. In it goes. Do you have that now? One teaspoon of salt mixed in one teaspoon of water into the dough that we've blended for 10 minutes so that it pulls away. Now, if you don't have a heavy mix master, at this point, you have to stop and blend in the rest of the flour by hand. And by the rest of the flour, I mean the flour that's in the bag, right? I've got to change sacks. It's, it's important that you understand I started the first batch out of this sack, and the batch that I have on the mixer now came from this sack. And we're probably, uh, oh, an, an ounce or two off in terms of weight because I used the cup, you see? So I want to use the bag that goes with this bowl. Am I making sense? Good. Now, we'll blend in the rest of the flour this will take some time, so I'll show you what we finally wind up with. I usually make an enormous mess when I make bread. That's the fun part. And yes, I do get my hands into this eventually. I love it. Let me show you what happens. Blend in the rest of the flour. Knead that for a time, about five minutes on the machine, about 15 minutes by hand, and you'll wind up with a dough that's simply gorgeous. Let me show you. Uh, let it rise then for um, uh, an hour or two, or two hours, I guess, and then you can punch it down. Look what you get. I just throw mine on the counter. You see, I just sped it on Formica. That's what this is. You see, just plastic counter. Come here, you. And then I put a bowl over the top. It's much easier to handle that way. You see, a good dough, a good dough doesn't stick to your fingers unless someone's watching you on television. Then, of course, it sticks to the wall boards and everything. All right, here we go. Let's knead that down. Have you got the recipe? Two and a half cups of water. I'm going to knead this for a bit now just so that we can become friends, you see. Two and a half cups of water. Two pounds, three ounces of flour, exactly two pounds, three ounces. And that will vary from one ounce, depending on the weather. If it's the summertime and the flour is a little bit wetter than it would be, or if it's heavy rain in the wintertime, you see, you have to, you may want to vary that by an ounce. You'll, you'll get into it. I use generally about two pounds, three ounces. And then a teaspoon of water and a teaspoon of salt. And you blend the flour into the water solution by, by four cup units. Start with the four cups first into the water and yeast, two packages of yeast. And let that go for about 10 minutes on your machine so that it's good and gooey, make gluten, you see? When that's finished, then you put in the teaspoon of water mixed with a teaspoon of salt, and then eventually knead in the rest of your flour. Let it rise for two hours under a bowl on a board. Punch it down. Let it rise a second time. Punch it down the second time, and you're ready to mold your loaves. Now you're going to say, well, you're, letting, you're taking a lot of time to let this thing rise. Well, that's how you get a crust, you see? You can't hustle French bread. It's impossible. You've got to let, it, let the flour go its own trip. And that means that you've got to relax and uh, allow the gluten to form so that you get a nice crunchy crust. So this is raised uh, twice, you see? So now we're ready. Let me show you some, let me show you some shapes here. Uh, for instance, this one is very easy to do, you see? This is going to make four loaves, by the way. If I were to cut up this big blob of dough, I could get four loaves this size. And let me show you how to do that. It's very simple. I'm not going to let my good knife cut my, uh, touch the marble, for heaven's sake, so you'll wreck the whole place. All right, we have four loaves out of that batch. And to make this particular kind of loaf, you see, this, this uh, one with the cross on the top, which I think is really kind of pretty, simply fold your dough under, under, under. See, I'm making a nice round loaf. See what I'm doing? Folding it under, under my fingers, you see? Nothing to it. Isn't this marble a joy? Nice chunk of marble. Marble's cold, you see, and nothing will stick to it. 
so you don't have to keep adding a lot of flour. There it is. Now you put this on a, on a, uh, on a pan, on a tray, uh, and I, I like to put a little corn flour underneath the thing. So let me show you how that's done. This is hardly what you call complicated. And I get the rolling pin out of here. That's marble too, I love it. All right, so I'm gonna put cornmeal on the bottom, white cornmeal, on the bottom of my, of my little loaf here, you see? Put white cornmeal on the bottom. Then we're gonna put flour on the top. And that's a very simple process. You simply roll it in flour. The other method, of course, is to glaze the dough. But I don't like a glaze on this, on this uh, classic loaf, you see? Um, this will swell up and we'll get this kind of shape eventually. And it's, uh, I like this, this um, what do you call it, dusty looking uh, peasant uh, flavor that uh, the appearance that the loaf has. Isn't that neat? Let the dough rise, and after the uh, dough comes to uh, rise, oh, what, uh, an hour and a half, maybe an hour, an hour, it shouldn't take any longer than, about an hour, you see, let it rise on your pan, and then to simply make the crust, you just cut the dough, after it's, after it's risen, you see, you just cut the dough like so, and it will open up. Nothing to that one. It's very simple. You make a whole pile of these, four out of that batch, you see? Now let me show you another one. I'm gonna probably just knead this dough back in here. I'm not gonna keep making batches. I want you to see the whole works here. Let me show you another one that's really great fun. This one is hardly what you call complex. Now this is two loaves. You see, isn't it a beautiful loaf? See how, hard, how easy this one is? Let me show you. It's a snap. You simply take a big blob of dough. There we go. And we knead it up here. Big blob of dough, form it into a ball. And we're gonna take half of the dough here. There we go. Form it into a ball, just as we did before, and poke a hole in the center with your thumb. You got it? You want a great big donut, you see? And then just start working on it and kind of let it hang. You see, I'm letting the weight, the weight of the dough kind of pull on itself, and just stretch this thing out until you get a great big round circle. Put that on the tray. Remember the cornmeal now. The cornmeal acts as a kind of ball bearing underneath the loaf. And on and on it goes, you see? Stretch that out. It has to be about twice that size. And then, uh, then when it rises, uh, you'll have a nice big round loaf. That's fun. Here's another one. It's very, very simple to do. Simply a little bitty roll, you see? Isn't that a gorgeous little thing? And it's so simple. All you do, let me show you this one. All you do is take a small amount of dough. You'll get a good, oh, I suppose a dozen, a dozen out of uh, this batch. Roll it in a ball. Then roll it thusly. See what I'm doing? Just to put little ends on it. And there he is. And then later on, after it rises, then you can put a cut in it, you see? Roll them in flour, cornmeal on the bottom, and you're all set. Now let me show you the fancy stuff. Let me show you, well, by the way, if you wanna make long loaves of French bread, you can buy these pans. Uh, I don't really like them. Uh, these pans leave the, you see the bottom doesn't, doesn't ever really cook. I want it nice and brown. You see how the top is? But underneath it's not brown. If you'll just cook them on a regular pan, uh, you'll get a much nicer loaf. This is a, has a golden glaze on it. I simply used egg. You see, that's a, a great difference between that and this peasant, uh, peasant color, you see, just flour. This one has egg on it. That's why it looks so uh, uh, glazed, you see? Now let me show you another fancy one. By the way, keep your kids in the kitchen. And you do that by getting some little bitty pans. These are put, in, uh, put out by Hohen uh, in New Jersey. Marvelous little pans. You can buy them in any department store. Give them some dough and let them make their own little bitty loaf. Look at the size of this critter. Isn't he cute? And it has a nice egg glaze on it. Anything to spend time with the kids, and it'll work. And one lady accosted me in the supermarket the other day, and she said, you're always talking about my kids. My son is 48. What she means is it's too late. You see, well, it's not too late with her grandchildren. For heaven's sakes, get them into the kitchen and get them going. It's great fun.